Hello world, after a long break I'm back with content for Unreal Engine Metasounds and I'm going to talk about the Fetcher frequencies today. You might have heard about these frequencies. There uh, are some ideas in that they have some healing properties uh, for mind and soul and also for the human body. There are even some scientific studies on it like uh, analyzing effects on the endocrine system or the nervous system of animals and humans. And many people believe um, that these specific frequencies, such as 396 hertz or 528 hertz, have some healing um, properties or at least some positive effects maybe on your mind and soul. I personally am not sure if I believe in all these theories surrounding these frequencies, but I like the sound of it. I experimented with it in my own music, in my own sound design, and I think um, there are some some really positive um, uh, effects of it, at least for myself. So if you have tried it out and you don't like it, there's no need to continue with this video. Only if you maybe want to tune uh, your Metasound patches to some completely different uh, frequencies, um, maybe you can use some of my ideas too want to do that or if you want for instance a 432 which is not a, a Sofetcher frequency but many um, musicians believe that this frequency also has some positive frequency uh, te uh, tendencies or properties and uh, positive effects on the human mind or body so if you want to use some different tuning some micro tunings you can also continue watching this and you might get some ideas how to uh, use uh, different tunings in your medicine patches. But let's uh, first start with uh, some background on solfeggio frequencies. Um, there are six original solfeggio frequencies um, which you can see, see here on the upper left side and there are also some extensions. Uh, there are many more that you can find on the internet but these three uh, you can uh, see very often. And here in the middle, I also uh, showed you some historical uh, historical tunings that we have evidence for, uh, such as uh, 415. Many people think that this is the traditional Baroque tuning of instruments, and many musicians use this tuning in their music, uh, especially if they want to make some Baroque type uh, compositions. There are also here some historical frequencies um, that were used to tune instruments. Um, the first one, 421.6, um, was found in the tuning fork of Andreas Stein, who was a famous uh, builder of pianos, which were used by famous uh, composers. And this uh, 422.5 uh, was found in the tuning fork of Handel, which of course is a uh, famous composer. And uh, here you can see on the left side, you can always see the um, bass uh, tuning, which I would call it, which is the uh, tuning of the A below the middle C. And here you can see the tuning, the accordion tuning of uh, the next C. So if you tune uh, the A below the middle C to 440, which is the standard Western tuning of instruments that you can hear in most contemporary pop music, um, the next C gets tuned to 523.3. But if you use 444, the next C fa falls directly on a solfeggio frequency of 528 Hz. Of course, you can also tune your um, A below the middle C to 528 uh, directly to a solfeggio frequency, but then the next C falls to a completely different frequency. So um, to illustrate how to use a different tuning in Metasounds, it's very easy to uh, just tune a single oscillator. For instance, if you use the sine oscillator, you connect it here, we don't need the one shot. Um, you connect it to your mono output and hit play. And you can hear the standard A below the middle C tuned to the standard 140 hertz as is common in Western music. If you change this to 444, you don't hear a big difference. But if you tune it to 528, of course, it's a completely different sound. And 
just to uh, give you another comparison. This is one of the uh, tunings um, that you find ideas surrounding it uh, with regard to, to uh, healing properties. For 132 it's on the Sarpeggio frequency, but another so-called miracle frequency. And listen to it closely and we switch back to 440. And you see of course it's a little bit higher, it sounds a little bit sharper. Now listen very, very closely, so switch it to 444. The difference is not very big, in my opinion, but you can hear uh, a difference. So, of course, you can just uh, make sound design and based on a single solfeggio sol frequency. For instance, you can um, use 528 and you put an envelope on it and so on, and you can make a, a basic a sound effect based on a single solfeggio frequency or on multiple solfeggio frequency if you use multiple oscillators and then for instance you can make if your character in a game collects some healing item for instance you can tune the sound um, that players hear to a solfeggio frequency which is associated with uh, some healing properties which might make sense and of course you can um, use any tuning that you, that you would like, uh, any tuning based on any solfeggio frequency. If you want to go, go lower, you go can go to uh, 396, for instance. If you go higher, you can go to 852. Um, this, of course, is really, really simple, and you can use it for any sound effect um, that you make in a very, very simple way. But, of course, then you only have a single note and you might want to make a whole composition based on a specific solfeggio frequency. And um, this, of course, implies that all your other notes also have to be a little bit detuned uh, compared to the 440 standard Western tuning. And I made a little patch here in Metasounds, um, which assures that all um, the notes that you get from your MIDI input or your input array in this case get tuned based on the goal frequency that you can set and if you set this goal frequency to a solfeggio frequency give an, uh, here is not a solfeggio frequency but here is this supposed miracle frequency of 422 uh, but let's tune it to a solfeggio frequency of 528 and your whole array of notes gets tuned to this frequency so this is standard western tuning this is tuning the A below the middle C to a 444 so the next C falls directly on the solfeggio frequency and this is tuning directly to a solfeggio frequency. Um, yeah, so you see um, it's very simple. You just need a few notes here. Um, for those of you not very familiar, familiar with uh, Unreal Engine Metasounds, this might look a little bit complicated. You can completely forget about this part uh, and also this. Um, these are just some effects, stereo widening and stuff like that. Um, maybe uh, interesting uh, for newbies to Metasounds is the st step sequencer that gives uh, this little Apache uh, that you uh, hear playing when you play. So these are the notes basically that you hear. And if you're interested in step sequencer, check out my uh, other videos on Metasounds. I have some. Uh, diving in much deeper with uh, step sequencers and showing you how to build different step sequencers that can get more complicated. But uh, to explain uh, just basically what I'm doing here, um, you need one note that sets the uh, speed of the composition, the tempo, BPM, beats per minute. And you connect this to a trigger repeater. The trigger repeater is connected to the input uh, trigger. So if you hit play, this gets triggered. And the trigger repeater 
just uh, gives out repeating triggers based on this BPM that you put in here. As you can see, of course, I put it to uh, drum bass uh, BPM, um, 172. So if you hit play, or uh, if you trigger the input trigger, uh, the trigger repeater repeats based on the BPM that you give it and gives out repeating uh, triggers. And then you have a trigger counter. This just counts how often this trigger gets triggered. And uh, it's getting reset after eight steps because I have a note array here uh, with eight notes. So every time this trigger uh, counter receives a trigger, um, this get note um, gets the value of this trigger and uses accordingly, uh, takes one of these floats in here, gives it out to this MIDI to frequency float, which translates it uh, to a frequency based on the standard Western tuning of um, tuning the A below in the middle C to 440. And these three notes are all uh, that you need to uh, compute the distance um, to um, the A uh, below the middle C, so to speak, um, based on the note you have here. So for instance, if you pl play C above the A below the middle C, so if you play in middle C, it, uh, these notes compute uh, the distance to the A below the middle C and just uh, uh, gives out three. And the three is then used here, divided by 12, then two to the power of this division. And then you take your goal frequency in our example here at the moment, it's at 528 and 528 gets divided by the result of um, this um, yeah, com computation. And this is the note frequency that is based on uh, the MIDI note you give in this array. So what uh, if you have a MIDI input, the MIDI input uh, goes in here, your MIDI in, or in this case, the um, float value from this array goes in here as MIDI in. Then it gives out the uh, frequency based on the standard Western scaling. You do some very simple math here to uh, compute the distance to the A below the middle C. And then you use this distance to check which frequency um, the specific note that you play here should have so it stays in tune with the goal frequency and in scale with um, the um, yeah goal frequency that you can set in here. So whatever frequency you set in here, these notes make sure that any MIDI input that is received here gets translated in a frequency that uh, yeah is according to the scale set up by these goal frequency. So all you need to use a specific tuning in your Metasound composition are these two groups of notes. This computes the difference of a specific MIDI input or the distance uh, to the A below the middle C. And just these notes here, they uh, compute the frequency of the note that it's tuned to this goal frequency. So you see, it's really very basic, uh, very simple setup, uh, just some basic math notes. And you can tune your oscillators to any frequency and play MIDI notes uh, or put in a MIDI array in whatever, with whatever composition you like, and you get frequencies tuned to your goal frequency here. And change this again to something different. For instance, let's use, let's use the miracle frequency 432. Compare it again to standard Western tuning. of 
is very uh, subtle I would say it's very slim with the coins but nonetheless um, you probably can hear I don't know I don't believe in uh, all the theories uh, surrounding this but my ears like it I can't help myself I really do like it I like it more than the But yeah, let's go back to the 528 again. And again, this is the basic setup that you need to uh, tune, to change the tune of your composition. And here, uh, for newbies and met metasons, is uh, just a very basic uh, synthesizer. You have some uh, oscillators here. I also use a super oscillator here with some, uh, some uh, detuning, just to give it a fuller sound. Um, you have uh, filters here for the two oscillator you have the low frequency oscillator just to give some little bit of movement to the um, filtering that is done here uh, you have an enveloper that uh, just changes the volume so uh, every time the trigger gets triggered um, the volume goes up based on the attack time and then goes down based on the decay time back to the sustain level and yeah, you have a, a stereo mixer mixing um, the, the filtered sound from these two oscillators together uh, with uh, some delay that you can put in here. So you have some stereo spread to make the sound a little bit wider. And here you just have some additional effects. You really uh, don't need all of this if you switch all the effects off. Sounds like this. So all of this. And here at the moment. just did this uh, for fun uh, so it's not so boring to listen to while I was working on it and yeah that's basically it um, you have a simple oscillator um, you use the frequency in your oscillator you do whatever you like after your oscillator put effects on it uh, however you like and you just have to make sure that the note frequency that goes into your oscillators here so of course if you have like 10 different oscillators um, you uh, want to use the note frequency that you compute here in all your different oscillators here and um, the important part for the solfeggio frequency is just this part here first you get the distance uh, to 440 hertz and then you determine the new frequency so you only need this for uh, changing your tuning for using solfeggio tuning and so on and of course, if you want to make a little apache or a longer composition, you can use a simple step sequencer setup like this. Uh, as I said before, if you want to get more uh, complicated uh, step sequencers, check out my other videos or more complicated setups here in the oscillator or effects part. Check out my other videos on metasounds. Basically, for the solfeggio part, you only need these notes. So you can just copy this very easily and use it in your metasounds uh, compositions or of course if you want to make a short sound effect like di -di -dim for some item um, or something like that you can also uh, do this with a simple note arranger like this of course you can also connect your midi controller and directly um, put in midi input here uh, i also have a video on this i think maybe i haven't put it up yet um, but yeah, it's also not very complicated. So in Metasounds, you can use either uh, float arrays as MIDI input or MIDI controllers. And then you can change all your frequencies according to a goal frequency if you follow these simple notes here. Um, yeah, because I like to combine stuff that should not be combined with each other, um, <laughs> I also put in some din all parts here. Um, so here you have uh, um, basically the same setup. I deleted all the effects, make it a little bit simpler, but put in a trans transgate 
Uh, so it's a little bit more interesting. And the Bing Aura part, um, it's another uh, idea uh, to make healing sounds um, compared to the solfeggio uh, frequency stuff. It's a little bit different because it's concerned with the difference between what you hear in your left ear and your right ear. So the idea is you get uh, one frequency in your left ear and another frequency in your right ear and your brain computes uh, the difference between these two frequencies and depending on what difference uh, this is, you might also get some healing effects or benefits from listening to um, these bin oral beats. So for instance, if you put uh, 12 in here, this just means the um, oscillator that you hear in your right ear gets tuned up by 12 hertz. Some people uh, really don't like bin oral beats and even report negative effects, but some people swear on it that it's very beneficial and very good for you. You have to de decide for yourself if you like it or not. Um, yeah, I just put in some stuff to make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, uh, the bin oral beat uh, part uh, is just detuning one channel, left or right channel, as opposed uh, to the other channel. You have to decide for yourself if you like it. Of course, the problem if you combine bin oral uh, beats with the uh, solfeggio part is uh, solfeggio is based on a very specific frequency that you get here. If you de detune one of your channels to a different frequency, of course, you destroy the solfeggio aspects of the second oscillator. But um, my idea was that uh, solfeggio fre frequencies are based on um, specific um, horizontal uh, checksums. So if you uh, look at these solfeggio frequencies, the uh, horizontal checksum, so if you uh, add up um, the digits here, 3, 9, 6, it's always like a, um, a divisible by 3. And if so, if you use uh, like um, a hertz value here for the binaural part that is divisible by 3, I think you might be good with regard to your healing properties. But of course, you have to decide that for yourself if it, if it has a positive or negative effect on you. Transcating might destroy some of the uh, some of the bin or beat part. As you can hear some subtle uh, differences here in the binaural part. Um, also have a very big effect on what you hear. If you hear in stereo, if you hear in mono, uh, without headphones um, or without a stereo setup, you might not uh, really hear what's happening here. Yeah. There, like with the solfeggio frequencies, there are lots of ideas surrounding this uh, bin owl beat stuff. Um, some people say, depending on the exact hertz number, you have very different effects for your brain or maybe also for your body. Um, I don't want to dive into that. You can look it up on Google or ask um, ChatGPT about this stuff. Uh, so there are like um, bins of uh, hertz numbers that might have different effects. Um, you can look all of that up and maybe incorporate it in your sound design or your music compositions. Um, I myself just wanted to test it out how to do it in Metasounds and I might use it for sound effects especially. Um, 
uh, and yeah maybe also for some compositions I made uh, one video combining uh, solfeggio frequencies with bin oro beats um, that I just uploaded recently you can check it out I link to it in the description and you can let me know uh, if it makes sense for you if you like what you hear or if you hate it and yeah maybe uh, you can make much better use of these ideas um, if you want to uh, use some different tuning it doesn't have to be solfeggio frequencies if you want to use them like the tuning uh, that Andreas Stein used for his famous pianos or that Handel used or you can find um, many other different examples for specific tunings all across history and also like more contemporary tunings that people come up with uh, like 432 or different frequencies like the solfeggio extensions here you can all use it in your music very uh, easily by just following this simple setup here getting the distance to 440 hertz and then determining the new frequency that you want and you see it's just like a few mild notes it's very simple to do just have like a division power a logarithm and um, power again here so yeah it's very simple to do so why not check it out and i hope you make some nice music and or sound design with it and feel free to let me know what you do with it uh, link to your uh, own compositions to your sound effects or to your meta sound experiments um, feel free to link to it in your comments i would really like to check it out or write to me on any social media or anything uh, as always if you uh, have some ideas uh, about patches that you would like to do but you don't know exactly how to how to do it uh, feel free to also write me about it or to comment on it if you have any problems with this set out of course write in the comment comment section feel free to let me know what you're doing or where your problems are what you would like to do in the future or what you would like to get some support with in terms of meta sounds or sound design in general i'm always uh, interested in the ideas uh, people have and i'm always um, trying to help um, with uh, these ideas if i find the time for it yeah that's it for today thanks for watching and listening and see you next time